Bueno, y uno de los personajes más importantes del Hobbit, la batalla de los cinco ejércitos, es por supuesto Bardo el Arquero. Y me encuentro con el actor que lo interpreta, que es Luke Evans. Hola Luke, un placer. Hola. ¿Cómo estás? Very good, thanks. <laughs> Muy bien, hasta ahí, hasta ahí llegamos. So you've been having quite a ride with your career and, and this character that just catapulted you to the world. How, yeah. how was it for you? It was quite a catapult actually. I mean, it came... Um, I think I've been shooting films, I've been doing movies for about three and a half years when I find, when I got the offer to play Bard the Bowman, so it was a huge moment. And um, yeah, it changed a lot for me, it changed a lot of my career, my professional life. Yeah. And uh, now it's coming to an end, yeah. but it's been a big moment. And it's it a big farewell, but do you, do you feel sad about saying goodbye to Bard? Very much so. I mean, I said, you have to remember, I've stopped shooting this movie two years ago, yeah. so I had my, my moment of having to say goodbye, you know, two years ago. So it was, now it just feels like I'm opening up a wound and yeah. pouring salt yeah. into it. <laughs> Like Mexican put, salt. Yes, Mexican <laughs> salt. I needed tequila to go with that. Yeah. I saw the movie last night, it was great, and I see your character Bard as like the hero of this story. What was your take of, of, of your character when, when you began, when they gave you the first script of this movie and, and the evolution that he had? Well, it was difficult because there was three scripts, so you sort of, you're moving through the storyline bit by bit. And, yeah. um, a lot of scenes were added as we went along and storyline was expanded and um, It's funny because when you, because it's such a long process, you, you know, I didn't join the show, the film, thinking, yes, I'm the hero, you know. I joined thinking, yes, I'm a lowly bargeman and I have a family of three children and no wife. And it, I enjoyed the process and the storyline as it came, as it came, yeah. you know, not, I wasn't thinking about what I was going to do in the end of the third movie. So, um, it's, and it's amazing to see how Bard's character's e evolution of Bard throughout the movies um, <clears throat> happens and it's um, it's an amazing journey you know from a, from a man who just carries barrels across a lake to becoming the leader of the human army and in the middle of it slays a giant dragon so it's a, it's a, it was a wonderful experience and I feel very sad that I might not play a character like Bard <laughs> Yeah, probably Tolkien or, or the, the state of Tolkien can give rights to something else or they can make up something. Will, will, will you go back to it? Well, you have to remember, you know, Middle Earth is, um, is written over many hundreds of years yeah. and Bard is a human, so there's a very <laughs> slight chance like he Like in, in two alive. years? <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, what yeah. happened. We'd have to go revisit him quite quickly because he's already uh, in his 30s, so yeah. he, he hasn't got much long left. I love the, the first sequences when you go and fight and have this big battle with Smog. How, how was it on the set? How, how was it for you and the training that you had to go through? Um, well, it was, a, it was actually the first scene I ever shot. In the, in, in the, in the whole process? Yeah, 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 yeah. I shot that scene four years ago. Oh. It was my first days on, on the set in New Zealand. So it's weird to actually wait four years to actually finally see the film. I see that moment. Um, And when we shot it, there was no images of Bar uh, no images of Smaug. There was no idea of how he looked, how big he was, nothing. Wow. So it all came from my imagination. And um, Peter sometimes, well, he, when we were when we were doing those big dramatic moments, he would play very powerful, emotionally driven orchestral music that would help me, you know, get into a place. And it worked. It worked very well. Oh really? Yeah, it looks it looks good. But were you very aware of of the The Lord of the Rings uh, stories and the Hobbit stories before embarking on this movie. Yes, very much. Were you a fan yeah, of it? Was, yeah, it's been part of my life, part of my childhood, part mm -hmm. of my well, not childhood. I was a teenager, late teens, early early twenties actually. I think when the first Hobbit, the, the Lord of the Rings came out. So yeah. yeah, it's been been part of my my cinema memories. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, so uh, it was a real treat and a gift to be able to join that of legacy. Of course. You know? Three, two, one, action! And cut! Cutting! Cut! There's something that everybody talks about, uh, Mr. Peter Jackson, that he always likes to do retakes and, and retakes because he wants the best, always the best. H how is the process for the actor when, when the director asks you so many times to do one scene or the same scene over and over? <clears throat> well, the first couple of times it's, it's difficult. Um, because he just loves takes, yeah. he loves coverage and um, and then you sort of understand why he does it and I think the reason he does it is so that he can, he sometimes captures just a, a moment in one take, just one moment 
of something special that he wants to take and he will m mix that and merge it into something else and you have to trust him you just have to trust that this is his technique this is the way he works and uh, and after a while you just give in and just go okay well, <laughs> but at the end you feel like cents. okay yes i nail it this time it's better than the first one well you don't know because you're not seeing it through his eyes no and um, that's the thing you you just have to give everything every time um, as many times as you can and sometimes he asks you can you have you got another yeah. take? And you, especially if it's a big action shot, like of course. when we were shooting the dragon sequence, you know, there was, I mean, the setup took hours. And so every take would take, you know, three, four minutes, and then they'd have to take an hour to reset and lighting and flames and all of those things. So, you know, it was, um, it, it was a lot of planning and a lot of trusting Peter and knowing that if he needed to do one more take, then that's what you gave him. Yeah. When when they they ask you to do this part, to do the part, did you go through the Google and, and see what people were saying about him or or the fans said about you after the second one? Um, I I mean I I'm, I use social media, so I would have seen. Yeah. I did see what people were saying, and it seemed to be all very positive. Yeah. I was very it was happy. You know <laughs> that people liked it. I mean. It, difficult because you know this is a book that's been around since 1937 yeah. in people's imaginations they've, they've they've visualized what bars would look like and there's lots of artists impersonations of, mm -hmm. of, of, of how interpretations of how bard would look so it's, it's interesting you know it's but everybody seemed to embrace him and me and like the way he comes across so everyone's happy everyone's that's happy. a great part yeah yeah, yeah. to finish this uh, when, we saw, when I saw the movie last night, there is like, yes, we got all the action, all the battles, but there is the underline. There's a love story, a love story from Bart for his kids and, and from people around. That's, do you think what people are going to take away when they see the movie? What's your take on that? Well, I think that shows the, uh, Peter's ability as a filmmaker. He doesn't just make a film, he tells a story. And the story is only, it only has an effect on an audience member if it's more than just action and visual and spectacle. There's a, there's a strong emotional core that drives the, the storyline from all these different characters. And like you said, Bard's story is driven solely from his, uh, his want to protect his children. And everybody else has their strong storyline going on. And uh, I think that's why it's such a beautiful, a beautiful film that it, you know, it really triggers your heartstrings. You know, you're not just watching it for the spectacle that is yeah. the Hobbit. You're watching it because there's a powerful emotional core. Yeah, it crunches your heart when you're watching. It certainly well, does. It's a pleasure. Let's, like you're a big media and social media guy. Let's do the selfie this time. <laughs> One, two, three. Perfect. Thank you. It's All a right, pleasure. Mate.